Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Hi, and welcome to Common Ground. I'm your host, Ashley Hall. Common Ground captures the creative process of various artists living throughout our region. Each week, we delve into the veiled history of our area, plus we take you inside the cultural events that put the North in North Country. On this week's episode of Common Ground, we head to Hackensack and meet up with Grant Goltz and friends as they create a replica of an 1860s Ojibwe birch bark canoe. We're going to be building a 15-foot canoe. We're basing it on a canoe that actually existed and was documented approximately 100 years ago. We don't build a, a generic birch bark canoe. We try to build a, our canoes based on actual canoes that existed. Right now we've got a lot of materials to uh, uh, prepare. We're basically right now making the parts to the canoe. The birch bark canoes are all uh, stitched together and laced together with spruce roots. So we were out in the spruce bog this morning. This is some of the roots. We've got a whole uh, tub full heating up and when they get boiled, then we'll be taking the bark off and splitting these and starting to get them ready. We got to make about five or 600 feet of lacing to uh, sew this canoe up. This is actually what we'd be building the canoe on. As you can see from all the different holes, we built a lot of different canoes on this on this building bed already. Okay, we're making the, the building frame that forms the shape of the bottom of the canoe. Ah, that looks like a nice shape, huh? Yep. To make these uh, into lacings, what we do is we split the roots in half. If they're not quite round, we try to split them the long way of the oval so they make the widest lacings possible. So we just start to cut, start to split. Helps to hold it between your knees to brace it. I'm going to drive my truck over and load up bark over at the other building. I'll be right back. Now these are rolls of birch bark. These have been collected a few weeks ago. Yeah, this is timber sale bark, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was just telling them that we got most of this from a timber sale. Now what we have to do is clean up the inside of the bark a little bit, get all the loose stuff off. There's lichens and some of the looser bark. And we just kind of just use a scraper and clean it up. Set this bark on top. Slide this down a little more. Now, what I want to do, we're about to get to the magical part of this process where it goes from looking like these two big irregular scraps of bark to actually starting to look like a canoe. And, and it's amazing how little time that takes. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this building frame on top of the bark because this is what we have to use to shape the bark to start it looking like a canoe. Now what we'll be doing is we'll center this on the building bed. We are ready to make it look like a canoe. Now we got this nice piece of birch bark and now we're cutting it all full of, <laughs> full of holes. Well, there is a method in our madness. We're going to switch to a little bit of up-to-date technology. What we do is we use a heat gun. Birch bark becomes flexible when it gets heated. We could be having a bunch of water boiling and we could pour boiling water on this bark and bend these up. It's kind of messy and it makes a muddy place. 
and I don't like to put any more water on the bark before it's it's held in place because it'll starts to cause it to curl on the edges so I like to bend them dry bend the bark dry now obviously this isn't tall enough to make the side of a canoe here so we'll be adding bark contrary to modern boat building wherein you build the frame and put the exterior onto the boat for a birch bark canoe you, sh you build the skin of the boat and you put the frame inside afterwards. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bend this end piece up. It's a little more tricky because we've got to bend it right dead center down the middle here into a real tight bend and then that gradually goes out on either side to the bend like we did on the others. This is the part you kind of kind of bend it and then we'll be making what adjustments we need to later because we've got to make sure this stays over. Push that together. Gonna to make okay now. And then one on this hole on this side here. Strap up. There, see? That's wow. the end of a canoe now. That's a canoe. <laughs> Get your paddles out, yeah. folks, and we're ready to roll. My name is uh, Jim Jones. I'm a Leech Lake Tillager band member from the Leech Lake Reservation. I live up in Cass Lake, Minnesota. My Anishinaabe name is Majijuan, which means Flowing Creek. My grandfather gave me that name because he said I was always on the go, always moving like a creek, like a flowing creek. What I'm doing today is I'm making pegs for the canoe, and these would be going through the top of the gunnels, the gunwale cap. These are uh, ironwood, these pegs sticking up now, and those go all the way through, and if you zero in on the back side over there, you can see the pegs coming through the bottom. And that's how the caps are attached. There's no nails, there's no screws in a canoe, and if they're done the old way, the way that my ancestors did them, that's how they were used, is with the pegs. We're trying to bring back, you know, they're, they're, this is kind of an, an art form and a thing that uh, people just weren't doing anymore, native people weren't doing anymore. Um, so when we when we set out to build start building canoes, we said, okay, uh, someday we're going to want to teach more native people some of their old traditions, and, and so we want to build these canoes. And you know, I'm a white guy. This is not my culture. I'm dealing with someone else's culture. I think I have an ethical obligation to represent that as best as I can, as correctly as I can. It's not my business. You might say I'm walking on foreign turf and I gotta watch my step, you know. So I try to have respect for someone else's culture because they own it, I don't. And uh, that's one of the reasons we go through the, uh, the pains we do to try to do these canoes as close as we can based on what, what is knowable People sometimes use this word that I don't like. They say primitive. Well, there ain't nothing primitive about a birch bark canoe. And at least as, because the, the word seems to have a kind of a negative connotation to it. Uh, but when Europeans came over here, they had fancy boats. They had big wooden boats and ships and all this stuff. What did they use? They used the birch bark canoe. They didn't use the primitive technology to get around. They used the superior technology to, 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 to operate fur trade. Hey, God, you want to get the other end, Kevin? Sure. You would. Okay, we got to get them in between this. Um, yeah, we'll have to 
spread these a little bit. Not quite a bit. Because this tide came up a little bit. Yeah, I noticed that. I can see that. Okay, it might be a little low there. I'll clamp it and see. Approximately how much bark we're going to have to add. And we know we've got to sew from here to, wow, we've got long seams. We're going to be busy. Take this bark for outside the gunnels. Inside that bark. Oop. I'll never look at a canoe the same way. I've always appreciated them, but to be involved in all of the steps, it's like, wow, there is so much work that is involved in one of these. Yeah, we're just sewing the extra sheet of birch bark to get the height off of this one and we finished off the far side and this one uh, there needs to be a single stitch that runs down the length of it uh, and it's a double double lacing so as one goes out another one goes in it's a little challenging now this morning we carved the uh, outside gunnel piece we had previously done the inside gunnel piece and we got these all ready. Now one thing we do, we peg through the gunnels. It helps give it additional strength against shifting up and down and, and kind of locks the bark in place. So we drill a hole and yeah, we're a little bit modern here, but we drill a hole. We got a square peg and we're gonna put in a round hole. So we put this in into the hole And then we'll, we'll trim the ends before we lace. Now, we peg every other lacing. There's little red marks on the, on the gunnels. That's where the center of the lacings are going to go. The gunnel structure is actually made up of two pieces, the interior gunnel. And on the outside, there's an exterior gunnel piece that you see is, is a bit thinner. And then the bark is fit in between. One goes on the inside of the bark, one goes on the outside of the bark and it clamps the two, the, the two pieces clamp the bark together. What we'll be doing is sewing lacings. We'll be punching holes in here, sewing lacings to get this good and tight at every, every mark that we've made on here. And in between the lacings, that's where the ribs will eventually go in. There'll be 40 ribs in this canoe. So we've got this temporarily clamped. It's, so it's the right height. Now I'm gonna take this clamp loose. Drill another hole. Drive in another peg. So that, and we'll do that the entire length as we stitch this, we'll be putting, uh, putting pegs in. Once I get the, the clamp together, right, then I can trim the bark off so it's flush and doesn't sticking up, so it's not in the way for stitching. Now see, I'm scraping a few of the fibers off this root. You can see how long and stringy the fibers are on the root. Why, why, I mean, that's why it's so strong. I'm tapering this one end down, thinning it out. Now the other end, this end I'm going to lace with, and I'll put a point on that end so I can lace it through the, through the holes. So here's where the lacing group gets centered, is on this hole. So I'll go over just a little bit and I'll, I will 
I'll take the awl and put a hole, then I'll move this way. Well, they'll be about a half inch apart. Okay, so I put four holes and they span the length maybe about an inch and a half. To get the root started, we'll take the screwdriver, wedge this, wedge this open so we can tuck the end, of the tapered end of the root between the uh, uh, bark and the, and the gunnel. Now we gotta make sure we don't put a twist in the root. We wanna keep it nice and neat. So we start out, we lace the hole, the root through the first hole. We pull it through. And then we, we can't just pull this end and tighten the root up. You gotta tighten the root up as you're doing. So we're gonna tighten it around that corner, put my thumb on it. Then I can pull this the rest of the way through. And push and then it tightens. And then it's tightened around that corner. So, so, the, so that's the starting the starting stitch. So that one doesn't count as the going twice through each hole. So now we do the twice through each hole thing. Okay, it goes in the same hole. And again, we pull to snug it up on the inside, pull it over and see this first wrap just goes over the first complete wrap goes over that starting wrap, so that buries that. Now the succeeding ones we'll try to lay side by side so they're neatly put in. Hold this down with our thumb so it doesn't loosen up. Make sure we got flexibility in the root so it don't kink. And we pull it tight. Okay, now we want this next wrap not to go over the top of this. We want to lay side by side, so we've pulled it over push it with our finger on the inside so it's up alongside of that first wrap on the inside. We're going to ream this hole out just a little bit so we can get through there again. Okay, now we're going to sew the, this through that same hole. And then this hole's getting, it's getting pretty filled up with roots, so that's about the... You notice we didn't drill that hole with a drill because that would remove all the bark fibers from that hole. When we use this with the awl, it, it really nothing falls. You don't see shavings of bark. It, it spreads the bark hole open. And when that, when that bark gets wet again, that hole will swell shut and tied up onto the, to the stitching. Okay, here's, here's the root coming through for its last, for its last wrap. We pull it in now. Before we pull this tight, what we do is we make a loop. We make a loop like this so we keep the exterior surface of the root out. We put that under, under our wrap. Okay, so we got something here to grab onto, and we got something here to grab onto. Then we can pull this down like that and real tight as we can pull it and we still got a loop here we can pull tight okay we get that down okay then we'll take the slack up from the outside by pulling up that loop in pull it tight okay so that's tight tightly sewn now we'll pull this slack up in this loop by pulling this in you can see that wraps right around oh, we pulled it out it broke off after it got through but but what it did is it went through and then it's under this piece and it's it is down under the gunnel that's what I wanted to do is get it down under the gunnel but it's wrapped through it can't come loose and then what we can do they can trim the rest of this end off and it's locked in there when that dry it'll never come loose 
And what I do is just find the fattest roots that work in here, and then if they get a little smaller, uh, you make the canoe look really nice by just graduating your roots, but yeah. don't worry. There's a board, a vertical board that goes in the ends of the canoes, and that's what I'm going to be making. A little bit off the side here. I'll split this in half again. Now I'm gonna do is take the draw knife and start making this into a flat board. We got this piece just about down to down to size to where we can carve the the headboard out. It's a nice fairly uniform thickness. About even is reasonably straight. So that's ready. But now uh, the other part of this the end frame is this big long bent piece. And we got we gotta carve this to shape, but instead of doing that right now, I'm gonna look for some cedar. To make that big long bent piece and, and get that starting to split up. I'm going to use this really straight grain piece of cedar for the end frames in the canoe. This is nice and clear with no knots. It's a little gray on the outside but that's just a little bit of surface weathering. So I'm going to <laughs> split some of this off to get it more the right size. See how nice and even it splits. And then what we'll do is we'll split it into laminations because it's got to make this big uh, tight bend to fit into the frame of the canoe. So we'll get that and then it'll be all ready. This is going to fit into the end of the canoe. So actually the very bark at the very end of the canoe will be, will be on each side of this. So we need it to, to, to taper. You can see it's narrow here and it's wide on that side. We need to taper so the bark will come right up even and then it'll be, be stitched right through this wood. But first we're going to, we'll be making this wood so we can bend it. And obviously it doesn't, doesn't bend too well the way it is now. It's pretty stiff. So uh, what I'm gonna do is split this into, into many layers. But I don't want to split it quite to the end. I want to leave a solid piece on one end. So I'm going to wrap, wrap this around it and tie it off so it'll stop the split. I'm going to split this in half first. And then I'll pay careful attention to how it's splitting. It's staying pretty much in the middle. It's going a little bit to this side. I want to bring it back to the middle a little, so I'll flex this side just a little bit. It's getting more back in the middle. So it's okay, it's split down to where we tied it off. Yeah, that stiff piece of wood, now it's flexible. Let those splay open a little bit so the heat can get in there. Okay, one more, one more wide piece of planking. Probably get us close. Now, to fit the rib, what we do 
we'll set it down in place where it's going to go. We'll hold it down. And then I'll make a pencil mark at the top of the gunnels. And we taper out the ribs a little bit like that. And then we cut a 45 degree bevel. You drive it into place. See if it's going to go. Looks like it's probably going to fit perfect. We'll keep going now till we'll get, we'll put all the ribs in up, up to the center and then we'll, we'll start from the other end and the last rib we put in will be this one. Yeah, time to come in. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed the show and we look forward to seeing you next season right here on Common Ground. If you have a segment idea for Common Ground pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org or call us at 218-333-3022. To view this episode or any Common Ground segment, visit us at lptv.org backslash common ground. segments or copies of Common Ground, please call 218-333-3020. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, Contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008.